then here we go this is part two um it's just uh, a, a continuation i just sort of split it and just sort of carried on there's no major editing done or anything like that i've just done um i've just done it like this so uh anyway i'll shut up let's get on with it here's part two i watched the one on freddie mercury all right yeah 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 see i do i watch you know i, just, I i'm sneaky because i don't often leave comments i just sneak onto people's yeah. channels and things but but yeah um and it, I, find, yeah, I find it interesting you see now like i don't know if you know about the idol bands in japan uh, no no well you got x amount of girls singing yeah anything mm. between four six girls singing right yeah now as far as i'm concerned there's two types of idol bands there's the ones that turn up they've got a band behind them right fine yeah. then somebody else turns up with a laptop and the scenes that's karaoke i'm mm -hmm. sorry but i just call it karaoke because yeah. there's no band there mm. one particular uh idol band uh, they're very good and then sort of halfway through the stop and give the band a you know yeah. to play and they're a yeah. good band and i'm thinking yeah that's real that's that's real not not you know and i know they use these the voice effects and everything else because i don't i don't mess about me singing because i can't sing to save me life so i thought well we'll go and pitch correct this that surprised me how close i was <laughs> i thought how do you manage that yeah yeah <laughs> but, but um, but yeah, I mean, I can do all, all right. I just, you know, mix my own stuff and whatever, and just do it how I want it. Yeah, you know, I don't compress the hell out of it. Mm. I don't like it to sound. I, I I I leave it as best I can by just mixing it. You know, just getting it where you want it, but without. Well, oh, let's uh, let's whack the compressor in here and get some of this and get. I don't do that. I just want it to sound like original because I. I've got no amplifiers, by the way. I use a Helix LT. Oh yeah, yeah. Amazing what you can do with that. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's all it, it's it's fun. I mean, it's like intros. Um, I mean, I've got I've got probably a few ideas that I'm putting together. But then it's, again, it's, it's time filming it. Green screen. I'm going to do something silly. It's it's only me. I mean, I've even worked out now how. I, I've got a picture of a house and a roof, and I've worked out how to film myself climbing onto the roof. <laughs> yeah. right? Um, takes some doing. Yeah, you know, it's like you say, quick press record. Yeah. Run <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But but I, that's that's what I want to do. I don't I don't want to be taken too seriously with what I do. Hmm. But I mean, like what what you do is incredible. I mean, your, your knowledge and everything else. I mean, I'm self-taught basically. Well, I've always felt you. I'm dyslexic, by the way. Right, so that I've always felt useless. It's only four, what, four, five, six years ago that I actually started telling people I was. Yeah, because you just feel totally, totally useless, especially back in the sixties when I was at school. You know, it's just treated as being thick. Mm. So it's like you know, and and that, that's how you feel. So, so when we make, so we're in a band back going way, way back. And with any band, and my mate says to me, Oh, he gives me this book to learn to play guitar. And it's a book, it's got it's got words in it. I'm gonna struggle yeah. here. Yeah. So obviously today's different with spell check and all, all the rest of it, and you know, blah blah blah. But but anyway, well, I left that band because I wanted to do Beatles covers. Um that's why <laughs> I left. Yeah. I wanted to do his own stuff. Let's start writing his own stuff. And they turned around and went, No. Now we're going to do some Beatles school. I said, well, not with me, you're not. I'm, I'm, I'm off. Yeah, and that's it. I, I just left. And then I, I stopped playing for about 20 odd years, mm. you know, because I was just, just general life. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm, I'm no, I'm no, I'm no fancy guitarist. I just, you know, it, I know when a bit of bum note, you know, let's put it like that. It's, it's, it's yeah. yeah. But I think it's a huge change that's happened with the internet is like you said, when you're trying to learn an instrument or maybe yeah back in the 60s and the 70s people would buy textbooks and try and learn that way i mean i i, I see myself as very lucky that i just listen to records and try to figure it out that, that I, I didn't have lessons or anything like mm -hmm. that so 
the ear kind of gets used to the sound and then you know where to go for that particular sound. Um, but nowadays, if you want to learn guitar, if you typed in, say, for example, you know, pentatonic shape one, the results you'd get would be YouTube videos of someone showing you. Yeah, so it's yeah. a it's a visual thing. Yes. And I think that's a huge reason why. Well, now you can literally just type in anything and learn to do it instantly because somebody will show you yeah. in a visual form rather than having to read a book and, and maybe, you know, misinterpreting some words or kind of playing the wrong notes. So I think that, yeah, now playing the guitar and literally learning to do anything, you know, kids especially are cutting out years of, you know, what would have taken me maybe a year or two to figure out uh, by listening and trying to do it. They can just literally get a you know, a video that somebody is showing you how to do it. Yeah. So they're yeah. cutting out years of learning, or at least um, it's, to me, it's kind of you know positives and negatives that they're learning to do it straight away. But now, if I played them here, like I do on my live streams, just playing along to a random backing track, if I now played a random bit of music to them and said, "Okay, jam over that," they say, "Well, what key are we in? You know, what what mode do, do I start in? What's my scale?" And you say, "Well, you don't, you shouldn't need any of that because you can hear the music. So play your instrument. That that's what the expression's yeah, all about." Yeah, yeah, interesting. You should say that, right? Because let's say I'm, I'm playing in drop D, and I want to in normal standard tuning. Mm. I'll play an E chord and just do it. Mm. Just turn it, yeah. to, and you because you, 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 you just know it's. Well, I've got big ears anyway, so um, so yeah, and yeah, I just know it's right. And then if you mm. check it with a tuner, I'm never far out. And it surprised me. I'm thinking, not bad for an old git. Um, but, you know, it's, it, it's just, it, it develops, doesn't it? Mm. Um, it's the same as when I'm tuning the guitar. I don't know what it is. I, I just seem to know it's at the right pitch. Mm. Although I don't, but the, the joke is, if I, there's this will make you laugh. I'm playing, right? I'm, I'm sort of, let's say, lead bit, right? And then I realise I'm not looking and I screw up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I think that that's it. That's another huge thing is there's a point of playing when you're comfortable and, you know, nobody's watching and you're just practicing in, in your room and, and everyone sounds great when nobody's watching because th there's no pressure there. And I think a huge part of you know playing guitar, but anything, uh, doing anything at a high level is when you become self-aware or self-conscious of yourself. If people are now watching, you've got another thought process that happens in your head that isn't there when you're practicing because you're thinking, oh, now people are watching. So you, there's almost like that um, preconception that they are going to judge you on what you're doing. And you don't have that when you're practicing. So generally, you know, sometimes with, you know, in my kind of filled jams that people have called them now, you are aware on a level of you know, maybe 200 or 200 plus people watching what you're doing. So it's, it's, it's a totally different approach to being totally free and just, you know, like you would do. <laughs> you think, oh, you know, you're uh, you're so much more expressive or free when nobody's watching. And that is something that um, what well, Phil Palmer, who played with Eric Clapton for 25 years, when I interv interviewed him, he said, Eric Clapton has that ability to play like he's practicing, that no he doesn't care because n nobody's watching. But, you know potentially thousands of people are watching and it's kind of getting over that hurdle of course he, he would have the advantage of having done it his whole life but to uh, people when you, you start getting some some audience and quite a large audience later on in life you know then it's a case of oh i'm not used to this so you have to kind of yeah yeah and... okay, i can understand that yes mm. yes definitely yeah mm. that's it is it's interesting because that's that's like another element to it i mean it's okay like me messing about the guitar I could be running around jumping all over the furniture or whatever you know yeah not at all would, but but you know what I mean but then to film yourself doing it knowing mm. that you know it, or, or or doing it live it's like hmm yes you know because <laughs> it's, it's it's like it, it's like it's it's like with me with, with me playing I, I'm self-taught I just do what I want mm. I won't do covers right although I'm under pressure to do one um because i only made a joke about it mm. uh thinking of doing a cover of i'm um, turning japanese yeah and i thought oh no so said, yeah go on do it do it i thought oh no mm. i don't i don't want to you see it's like i've got a bass guitar as well 
right? Now, this will make you laugh. I don't do covers. Plugs the bass. It's a five-string bass. Got it. What's the first thing I, I played on it? I don't know why. I don't even know. You know, it's got no no dots in there. So how can we get the right notes? Mm. But it just happened. Stranglers, peaches. Du, 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 du. And I thought, I thought hey, hey, no one's taught me that. Where's that come from? Yeah, yeah. But it's just the effect that got on the bass at the time, and it just set me off. And I thought, no, don't do it. Yeah. So, but I think, yeah, that, that that's a huge part of um, when I'd be teaching students, and they have that ear, that appreciation. Because I mean, lots of students, I, I, I say that the students that I had the most problems with were the ones that had learned scales and modes and needed to know keys and learn arpeggios and um, wanted to learn sweet picking and all these techniques where you're not thinking. You, you, and and I, I know that I say you're not thinking, it's subconscious. And this is why, you know, I, I very occasionally, but very rarely uh, throw in any kind of arpeggios or sweet picking in my own playing because it's too fast. It's not something that you're consciously putting in you're just saying you're loading up muscle memory. That that's all it is. So as I always say, anybody can play fast. It's just a matter of playing slowly for a very long time and gradually speeding it up. There's no expression in it. And when you hear one guitarist play really fast, the next guitarist who plays exactly the same speed will sound exactly the same. It's just speed. That's all it is. Whereas when somebody's playing slowly, you can start to hear the difference between one player and another player uh, because there's time to appreciate and absorb those those notes but you know like you're saying there that you start to play things that you somehow figure out by your ear not reading it from a bit of paper and that's something that i try and push people in the direction of because there's so much more creativity that you'll be able to access from that thought process than oh right let me play my guitar but where's the sheet music first you know, having to read it all the time. So, well, no, do away with that. Make something up. They say, oh, but I don't know where to start. <laughs> so, well, use your ears. <laughs> you know, that's what they're there for. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, I know. It's it's like with me, I'll, I'll, I'll play a bit and want to play some lead over it or whatever. And I'm thinking, what key I'm in? I'll soon find out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but uh, it's, but that's it. But not only that, but, but, but by playing slower, you can put more feeling into it and they all say that the real tone is in the fingers mm. and i totally agree with that um yeah. and because i mean i played i was messing about i did a lead bit and i thought well I, you know i was, I was just gonna i just feel filling it in for now i thought i'll do it later anyway it worked and i thought well that fits in really well can i remember it no yeah yeah and i thought i don't do covers so i'm not going to go back and learn that um <laughs> yeah but you know what I mean, and mm. but but things that happen spontaneously like that are usually the best. Yeah, it's it's that means it's it's come from you. It's come from your inner being, shall we say? It's just come out. I don't often get like that. Not at my age, you know. No, it's just. But um, but you know, there's, there's the times that happens when I do things like that, and it takes a lot because I, I I'm one of these people. I've got loads of tunes that, and none of them are finished because. They're never finished because that's me. I'm never happy with what I do. Mm. And somebody comes along to me and it's got to give me a clip around the ear, say, look, it's done. You know, that's just, just me. I'm I, I'm never happy with what I do. But that's all to do with this dyslexic, see, you know, always feeling you. So I'm never happy with what I've, what I've done. And, uh, but I'm sort of better than I was, you know, because at least, at least I know I can do an intro and go, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're 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 a few seconds getting we're a few seconds better. But yeah, it's all it's all good. So you've got all these um you say your, your guitars and that, and you've got what what one acoustic? Uh yeah, well, technically, well here I've got one acoustic, but I've got two other uh, tanglewood acoustics uh that are just exactly the same one in uh, white and one in black because the white one that i got um was great and i love the feel of it and again it was yeah. only uh, about 250 let, quid let me just show you my tanglewood yeah i own one tanglewood guitar oh yes <laughs> that is a tanglewood 
Nice. <laughs> right. Got it cheap for the simple reason. It, it's supposed to be called Warlord. It said it in, and then it said Warload. All right. <laughs> well, they could have just replaced it or done what I did, turn it round. Yeah. But but that is that is me. Well, that's what's in the intro. This is me. This is me Tanglewood, as you yeah. can see on the, uh, you know, and because uh, I mean they're known for making acoustic guitars. Yeah. And when this one popped up, I thought, I think we'll have that. Yeah. I mean, that's my first ever guitar, at least electric guitar, was a, a tang. I say was a Tanglewood Nevada, um, just sunburst body. Uh, I, I don't know how much it was, probably about 80 quid or something. Uh, but I still have that. And, uh, you know, I've put some heavy strings on there. I just use it to practice. And, you know, it's still a nice guitar. Yeah, it, it, again, it, even though it's really cheap, it's got quite a nice feel to it. Obviously, the action's quite high on it. But sometimes I like that. You know, if I'm just kind of practicing, then having a higher action is sometimes good because it forces your technique to be a little bit better. Yeah, because I've got... Um... Uh, three Les Pauls. Hmm. I got the HP one when the new CEO took over. All right, yeah. It was supposed to have the robot tuners on it, didn't. That's the first thing he got rid of. <laughs> and it's supposed to be three grand. Hmm. They were selling it for one for half price, one thousand. But I couldn't say no because hmm. otherwise, I never, I never would have brought one. Yeah. So I brought it. Next day, they'd all gone. If I yeah. left it for the next day, it, yeah, and 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 so it does all sorts. It's got blooming dip switches in the back of it, and oh, push pull, all all flip it. You know, it's like oh, I don't care. It's just I've got it. I've got a studio, and I've got this other. I have got one with the robot tuners on. All right, yeah, yeah. Um, it's really funny when you go to tune it manually because it'll turn the same way, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's not that good. It's not that good. Um, but uh, but yeah, I've got a, a Gibson Nighthawk. That's um, I don't know, smaller version of a Les Paul, but in a way. But I've had that a while. Got me um, Schecter seven string. I've got a Telecaster with a set neck, Fender proper oh. Fender Telecaster with wow, set neck. Yeah. They they made so many of them, and I thought I got it because that's got uh, humbuckers in. I don't like single coil but it does got right, yeah. you can coil tap it okay um i've got a variax line six variax yeah yeah do you know why because you get your internet lead you plug it in this end you plug the other into the uh, helix and then oh i want to detune it uh, just turn the knob yeah you know um that's interesting that is interesting but yeah uh, you know i've got all but that's why it's that's to me I will get inspiration from a different sound or plugging in a different guitar. Mm. And that's for me, that's what inspires me with uh, different sounds and things. I mean, I've got a keyboard as well, which I can't play a keyboard, but mm. I usually get it where you press one key and it plays several notes, you know? Cheating. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, called, it's called cheating. It's called cheating, but, mm. and that's how I, that's how I am. But I mean, with, with what you've done, I mean, you, you've been on, YouTube. I mean, that's your living now, isn't it, YouTube? Um, I would say more Patreon. It is kind of the thing that I rely on. That's my kind of foundation. Yeah. Yeah. As I always say, yeah. Yeah, because you see, I mean, what you obviously what you're doing because you've got your own your own music there, and obviously, and all the rest of it, you do your live streams and and all that. Yeah. Uh, whereas I, you know, I don't. So I'm not going to make money because ninety ninety nine point nine percent of my stuff is copyrighted. I don't care. As long as the artist gets it that's all that's all i'm interested in mm. you know if i wanted to make money on youtube i'd do something else another yeah. channel of you know but um but and of course you see with all the, the amount of stuff i've got on youtube and any, at any time i could get a copyright strike because somebody could just think oh, we don't we shouldn't you know so I'm, i went i'm living dangerously but i don't care i have got a backup channel in case it does all fall <laughs> but <laughs> But yeah, see, that's what I like about your channel. What you're doing. And you explain yourself very, very, very well. When you are explaining to somebody, when somebody sends you a comment, right, sit back for five minutes, why 
explains it because you do. Mm. You break it all down. And it's very good. It's the same as when when you break uh, break the songs down. But you mm. do it in such a way. I couldn't do it like that. I just either, I mean, I, it's either suits me ears or it doesn't um, sort of thing. But mm. even if I don't like something, I'm not going to turn around and say, well, that's total rubbish. I'll explain why it's not for me. You know, yeah. I'm not into jazz, but um, I know I've got a jazz one coming up on my list. I mean, I've next six days is already done of reactions. I put I do put quite a bit of time into it, but and and the way you you see the way the way you approach and what you're doing, I think it's 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 really good. And I mean, yeah, I'm got all that, all them subscribers for nothing. And what I like about your channel in particular, I mean, I know I never asked to like and subscribe. I never have done. But when you, I watch channels like yours and they're going, you know, oh yeah, PayPal, this, that, that, yeah, 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 Patreon. Patreon. And when you turn around and say to look, you don't have to donate mm. money. You are the only person I've ever seen say that <laughs> on mm. YouTube. And I watch a lot of all the channels mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm impressed with that mm. i am because um you know because the world's all about money 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 grab 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 isn't it and then you turn mm. around and say look you don't have to and then oh look if you've accidentally done it mm. well I, I, kudos to you kudos, absolute kudos because to, to do something like that is not it's not the norm the people yeah That's very, very <laughs> impressive yeah well it is um i think i don't know it's just my my point of view and i think yeah we've got similar views as we've already spoken about with other channels that are always pushing that kind of money agenda and you know i have had people that have said to me oh why don't you do a special thing where you charge for a request to go to the front of the queue effectively um, because there will be some people and people do they say how much do I have to pay to get the review of this uh, particular video and I just say to them that yeah that's not kind of what it's all about is yeah you know, to me music and it's just reminded me of something that uh, Frank Marino um, said who's from a band called Mahogany Rush um, kind of back in the day he was uh, touring and supporting Queen at the time and for him it got to a point where music wasn't now about the music anymore it was about you know the money and he said that uh b before this gig that there he was about to do with queen they set up two tables and he said oh what's this for he says oh well uh, people they pay this much and then they can come and you can sign something for them and he says, but why don't we just let them come through anyway? You know, if they're here early for the gig and I'll sign their stuff. I say, oh, no, we're charging everyone of we're charging your fans a hundred pounds or whatever it is, some extortionate fee to come and talk to you and for you to sign something. And uh, for Frank, uh, that was basically his line. And he said, right, I'm not doing this. And, you know, Frank, you know, if he had wanted to he could have gone down that same route of, of being huge and, you know, being a household name and especially kind of going around with Queen and playing to massive audiences. But he drew a line there and said, that's not me. I I'm not charging people to talk to me or to sign something. So at that point, he just went his own way and effectively became like an independent artist back when you, you really had to be signed to be playing to the huge audiences. But, you know, I, I think that's something that on an artistic level like i resonate with that that it's about music it's about for me as well education it's i i if i can teach somebody something that might help them then that appeals to me i, I don't want to say right for this bit of information i'm about to tell you you have to pay me that amount of money um because you know, life's too short <laughs> And yeah. I think that it's better to be in a community that is open like that, where you're appreciating the art form of music and where, you know, it's just, well, fundamentally, I think, just healthier for the human race to be like that and forget about the money thing. Because to me, looking hundreds of years into the future, if we want to evolve as a race, 
we've got to do away with all this money stuff because yeah yeah it, it's only ever going to cause confrontation and unfortunately as it, as it always does uh, right okay i paid twice to see a couple of bands one was papa roach one was steel panther mm. to meet them right yeah papa roach hello i'm so and so and take pictures done right well, I won't say what I thought because I don't use bad language um, on my channel. Um, right, Steel Panther. What a laugh. We had a good old chat with him. And honest, I'm not kidding. You know what I mean? Yeah. You you got something for what you paid for. It wasn't yeah. an awful lot, but you you got something back. And, and of course, it was just having a, having a right right laugh with them. and Because the, I've got a wig and Phil, what's, the thing is helping me put it put it on yeah yeah put the wig on and that and because i'm with a, a young lady half my age right sticks is going to be god tell him tell him it's your girlfriend tell him it's your girlfriend because he's got his arm around with you i'm going i'm not gonna lie because <laughs> you know i don't know if you know what steel pants are like they're, they are oh yeah yeah i know yeah yeah, yeah. i'm honest that they're just like it all the time and the, the, I, i've got nothing but good things to say about them for that yeah I mean, Steel Panther, for me, uh, I think they're from that. I mean, people might only know them now, but they are from that generation who used to talk to their fans and interact with them. And I mean, if you look into kind of all of their professional history as musicians, they are proper musicians, even though, you know, they've got you know the look and it's all tongue in cheek. But when you break down you know, the guitar technique, the vocals, you know, when you're talking about Van Halen, for example, with David Lee Roth and his vocal technique, and then you listen to Steel Panther, you say, well, hang on, we've got, and, you know, I know that um, the guitars are especially uh, similar as well with that level of technique. You can say, well, these are comparative bands from a technical standpoint. Obviously, one's tongue in cheek, but you can't fake uh, that sound uh, of being that good but i think they're, they're just fundamentally great musicians they've had that work ethic and they have that appreciation of fans uh, so i think yeah because of their fundamental uh, history as musicians they've kind of got that and, and they uh, definitely see every fan as, as really important to them and yeah. i think generally the newer bands they haven't been through all of that. So especially bands that make it at a young age and might be touring the world, they haven't had that period of, you know, going through hard times of gigging for years in, years out at pubs and clubs and, you know, getting things chucked in your face and all of that kind of stuff that gives you a different viewpoint on the music industry, but just life in general, you're more lighthearted with it because you've been through all of that. Whereas now I think if, any young artist got something thrown at them, then that would probably be the end of their touring career. Cause I say, look, I'm not, I'm not having to put up with that, you know, yeah. for, for the well, level of artist that I am. <laughs> you know. Fan made, right. Hmm. Halfway through the set, they have what they call magic time, whatever. And they're talking to the, the crowd doing stuff, but they're right. actually talking to the audience now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, come to the end of the stage and talk to them. Miku, the one that put the band together and one, I couldn't believe she did this. She just grabs the microphone and goes, cause, cause, and they all parted, right? Yeah. And because she's only small, she goes, oh, you know, it was up here. But <laughs> but so much respect for her, and she come down to chat. And I mean, th there's not many bands that do that, you know. Yeah. And, and so that's that's another reason for liking them for what they do. Um, and the only other time I've seen it do that is um, uh. Shine Down, do you know Shine Down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen them. Yeah. Rent the singer. Yeah, I've seen them a few times as well. Yeah. When he parted the crowd, but he has to, of course, he's got security with him. Yeah. Yeah, you know, to go to go in there. Yeah. Um, let's see. Limp Biscuit. Mm. Seen them live as well, have you? I haven't seen them, no. That's the guitarist that gets me. What's his face? He, he's he's something else. Wes. Mm. He's something else, but um no, I've even seen ACDC with the original singer. Oh, wow. Yeah. Back when, when I seen Lizzie, Gary yeah. Moore. I've seen them all live. Um, wow. You know, if you want to talk about the oldest I've seen, I've, well, there's so many, you know. How are you for time, by the way? <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. I've probably got another 
what maybe tw uh, 20 minutes probably yeah. would be all right I, yeah i i've got more rabbit than sainsbury's <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah um but but no but no this is interesting hmm. to hear your views on things because you see this is what I find. If the way you explain yourself is just so so good, I can't explain myself like that. And and the way and what you do with your channel, that's another thing. Anybody watching this, get over to his channel, Wings of Pegasus. It's all right. I will put a little bit in the start, a little bit at the end. It's at the end where I go ballistic with them all. Get over there, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Anything that you want to do is is much appreciated, but. Yeah, um, we'll see if we can uh, push people in each other's direction. I'm going to say this. I'll put this out here because you, you're on about, you know, people being... Right. When I went to the warning and I got introduced to you, the first thing when, when we're going back, I said, you know what? Phil is exactly the same here as he's on his channel. Mm. And that's, mm. that's brilliant mm. because then everybody knows that what you see on your channel is what you see if they met you in real life hmm. and that is brilliant uh that's that I, I'm, I'm all for that because i mean i know a lot of these others aren't quite like that but mm. amazing when are you off to america then <laughs> well i haven't got any plans at the moment but uh it is something that i'd like to do in the future uh, i'll have to kind of see what happens but i mean as with everything on this kind of crazy journey that uh, I'm on at the moment and, you know, being invited to things and, uh, you know, having things in the pipeline that might happen and might not happen. And it's just a case of thinking, well, maybe something will happen in the future over in the USA. I don't know. You know, my subscribers are talking about maybe having an event over there or, you know, in another lifetime, maybe setting up some kind of festival where, there are bands that can come along that, um, again, it's all kind of up in the air and up in the clouds. But I love the idea of having a kind of festival that isn't like other festivals where, you know, like, like you say about if you are going to meet people, there's always barriers in the way. But also having bands that might just be known on YouTube and not necessarily worldwide, but having like an event where you get to see these bands. And I am lucky in that. I know, you know, a few people and a few bands who are well known and, you know, do tour the world and all that kind of stuff. And I think it would be great to have a combination of bands. And, you know, I can ask some of the people that have been on the channel whether they'd be interested in doing a festival or an event where they play. And it's all about getting large crowds if we can get the crowds in, but they play. But also we get other bands there that would never get that opportunity. And, and that's another thing that unfortunately with signed bands and unsigned bands, independent artists, and this is something that just reminded me about being in, um, having an independent band. There's a band called uh, Bird Eats Baby and they're from here in the UK and they messaged me recently asking me to check out their stuff. And, you know, whenever somebody does that, I always check out their stuff. And they're quite heavy with their sound. And it's a female fronted band. But, you know, I'm not really into heavy stuff, but I can tell when it's done well. And and, and these girls just do it really well. You so, know, yeah, I've just, just made a note. Yeah, Birdie's Baby. So I said that, yeah, if I uh, chat to anybody that I think might be interested, then I'll I'll, I'll yeah, let them know. So <laughs> I just reminded myself can of that. I, can just I just, now. right, I'm, I'm trying to think of this event in Japan. It was originally set up by Shoya, which was the first female rock band back in the 80s. And there's mm. loads of them now. You'll get all different members from different bands all joining and playing different songs. Yeah. You know, this is the sort of thing I think you want to do, isn't it? Yeah, that would be great, yeah. And I'll get shot for this, not remembering the name of the event. It begins with N. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that's close enough. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm rubbish. I'm rubbish. At, at, right, I am totally rubbish at remembering names. Hmm. But numbers, no no problem. You know, I didn't have to remember the day all the time for this because it's a number. I can, you know, it's not a problem. Yeah. Um, but it, oh, but that's just me and names. But, but anyway... Yeah, it's worth that's worth checking out things like that. But I can see what you're trying to. Do. What about collaborating with anybody? Yeah, I I have in the past uh, done collaboration videos, but that was at the point where I w was doing covers and 
you know you, you'd send your guitars or, i mean generally like i did a um a collaboration with cena uh, who's a drummer uh, i know quite a well-known so drummer on, to, yeah yeah on on youtube and yeah with that collaboration i did everything <laughs> uh, but i then just took out the drums uh th- that are done on, on the song so then she kind of did the drums with that so it meant that i was sending her just literally the whole track and then she would just kind of drum along to it um but it's great because you know um this is the other thing that her dad kind of did all of the technical stuff like sending the tracks and and the video and that kind of stuff and cena just plays the drums and her dad does everything else um so obviously it's a bit different because i'm literally doing everything myself so when, when i do the track i'm playing all the guitar doing my vocals doing the backing vocals so it takes quite a long time sending over the track for her to put her drums on and then kind of getting sent that back um but the, the problem with collaborations is it's is the process of organizing the time it is it is like going back to having bandmates that you say to somebody okay right well we'll do this next week i'll send you my stuff on wednesday and then you can send me your stuff on thursday and then they'll get back saying okay yeah great and then thursday will come and i say oh have you got the the track and i say oh sorry i couldn't get round to it i'll i'll send it this weekend and now this is the thing that i'm not very good at dealing with is uh, being in limbo waiting for something especially when i've told people for example right the cover video is going to be out on sunday because the person's told me they'll give me their stuff on thursday um so with the collaboration thing that's something that yeah i thought it's it's you know it's great to do to you know build up your audience and all of that stuff and i know that that's why people do it but i I was quite happy just doing what i do and if people like it then great but i'm not got to push like oh i need to do collaborations with everybody no it's all right i don't understand where you're coming from and about the bit in limbo i do know that uh, yeah. I mean, there's things I could talk to you about, but I can't. I've got to keep my mouth zipped. Um, things <laughs> I'm up to doing, but um, but yeah, I'll probably tell you after we're not recorded. <laughs> but yeah. but but yeah, I I I know exactly what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying about it all. You know, it really. And uh, that's that's another thing that I then started doing. Uh, I thought right, I'd move away from coll- collaborations and do um, a, a series on my channel. I had one which. Uh, didn't go so well uh, which was called in at the deep end uh, which is where i would approach guitarists and ask them to jam with me or not jam with me but play over a backing track that you know we don't know what it's going to be uh, which is what i do on my live streams now and that's kind of how that all started oh no it's great but, like yeah that. so so um i did one with michael palmazano who you know he, he's great. And, you know, I spoke to him quite a lot and we had kind of the same kind of channels. He was doing uh, analysis videos or he called them reactions, but he was kind of breaking down, um, you know, techniques, modes, scales, because he, he's a guitar teacher. So um, he kind of pushed people I- into the direction of his website and his course for them to then buy. So, yeah, he came along and he's great. He's just a normal guy. Like I, I would you know, say that we're normal guys. So you're not that worried about messing up or looking a bit stupid, playing wrong notes. Um, So, yeah, he was great. And then I had another one with uh, Daniel Donato. Again, uh, he's a country artist, but again, he's just a normal guy. He said, yeah, fine. Yeah, let's do it. And then after those two, everybody and even so many people said, oh, you should approach this person. You should approach that person on YouTube because they assumed that this person would do it, that they were kind of good enough or uh, that they didn't mind playing wrong notes or whatever. But I hit a brick wall with everybody that I approached. They said, oh, no, uh, I, I, it's not something that I'm going to do. Play it over something that I've never heard before. So it's not for me. And yeah, even and I, I will say it now that um, lots of people said, oh, you should get Rick Beato uh, to do yeah, In at the Deep End with you. Um, and I did email him and he replied saying, oh, it's not something that I'm, you know, is that's for me, but I'm sure there are other shredders uh, that will do it. Uh, but, you know, thanks for the consideration. And I thought, well, this isn't something that you can shred because shredding is about knowing keys and knowing scales. So, yeah, unfortunately, I mean, it would have been great, but I think a lot of guitarists obviously have a particular I don't know, image maybe to portray online that yeah. they don't want to be seen as, you know, if they're showing people how to do things and doing lessons, they don't want to be seen to be playing wrong notes because then people might think, oh, but I thought you could play guitar. 
And but yeah, but this is the thing that I the reason I like it is everybody is the same. Everybody messes up. You know, like when I've done analysis videos, there might be a, a spot where Clapton messes up. And I mention it, but I don't draw too much attention to it. But I'll say the guitarists out there will know that Eric messed up in this particular solo, but he's very good at covering it up. But I think that having that perfect level all the time of only releasing or being seen to, you know, do perfect arpeggios all the time, it gives a false impression to guitarists of what real guitar playing is. Um, yeah. So, yeah. 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 It's like the ones doing the covers, you know, playing the guitar. Hmm. They have more than one camera angle because that means yeah. they haven't done it all at the same time anyway. Yeah. Then you get the ones that's just stood there, basically walk up, plug in and do it. Yeah. And, you know, if they make a bump, they're not bothered. They just do it. Uh, but And I prefer, watch, I prefer watching them. Hmm. The ones that's, you know, you don't see any jerks. Nothing's been changed. It's as they are. And I like that. Yeah. I like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is something I normally ask in an interview, but this has gone right off the uh, street and tracked one. <laughs> yeah. What's your favourite food and favourite drink? <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> I say favourite drink from <laughs> from a human standpoint is water. All right. Uh, <laughs> I always have water, but I, I don't drink. Uh, I don't smoke, and it's not because. You know, I like uh, alcohol and I just uh, am, am really yeah, disciplined with it. I just don't like the taste of alcohol. It's something that yeah. I've never really no, no, liked. No, no. Hey, tea, you're talking to a teetotaler here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This oh, is it. That was so... another reason I stopped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is it. Uh, yeah, I've just kind of never liked the taste. So I generally just go for what I drink most of is probably grape juice. Uh, I have that kind of a couple of times a day, but then I do like fruit juices, like tropical juice, like Tropicana or something. Yeah. So for some reason, I, I do like those kinds of things. And yeah, if I had the choice to drink other things, I would still choose, um, yeah, that, you know, fruit juices. Yeah, and in yeah. terms of food, I would have to say that, I mean, it would probably have to be pizza, uh, but I am quite strict with, I don't eat pizza every day. I, I maybe have it once a month, something like that. Yeah, but I think yeah. that's because of my background. I used to be a personal trainer. Yeah, no, I've, I've got a while. Yeah. So, yeah. So they, didn't have to ask that because already, you know, I've been on your channel. Yeah. But mine, yeah. mine is coffee. Oh, yeah. I do have a cup of coffee every day. That's that's one cup of coffee and one cup of tea. Uh, that's my caffeine I don't, intake. I don't drink tea. I just drink coffee. I probably have about five cups a day, that's all. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just the five, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, and the, the, the cold drinks, Lucasade. Yeah. Because I'm old, you know, I need to, you know, get some energy. Um, that's it. But, but, I mean, food, well, well, I've got, I've, got, I've got a joint of beef and stuff to cook. I like cooking. All um, right, yeah, I yeah. I do all yeah. my own cooking. I used to make cakes and things and stuff like that, but but so you know, I just eat all sorts. Basically, I'm a pig. <laughs> but um, well, yeah, but I mean, no, I just I just you know, I've got no necessary favorite myself. Anyway, do you want to work so we'll wrap this up? I think you know. Yes, uh, yeah, we right. can do. <laughs> Before we do, it's time for you to plug your channel. Off you go. Okay, well, <laughs> thank you for the opportunity. Oh, no. But yes, if you want to check out some analysis videos of artists throughout the years, uh, then you can do. That's what I do on my channel, as well as live streams where I play one of my own songs, which you can find at wingsofhexus.com forward slash music. But I live stream on Tuesday nights and Saturday nights, and that's 11 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. If you want to organize your times for your time zone, then you can meet me there live. And I do that every week without fail. And videos, even though probably subscribing and hitting the notification bell is better than relying on me to say the days. But I have analysis videos on Fridays, Sundays and Wednesdays. So, yeah. That's uh, what I do. And yeah, it'd be great to get a few more people involved, but there are already quite a few people involved, but anybody that wants to is more than welcome. And um, all the information will be down below because I'll make sure because I'll be the one putting it in. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you for that. And I mean, if I'm putting this on my channel, I'll 
definitely uh, tell people to go over in old Mr. B's channel. I'll tell you what, uh, old Mr. B, do you want to have a plug of your channel? Uh, nah, so then I've kind of got the footage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just, know. I'm just an old don't know. I don't plug myself. I don't do this. Is the thing. What I do, it's not about me. My mm. channel's not about me. It's about the artist or whatever. It's not, you know, that's why I don't plug myself. I just, I'm, I'm about, it's not about me. I've always said this. So that's as much as you're getting out of me. Yeah. So anyway, we'll call it, a, we'll call it a day. Do you want to end it the way you normally end yours? Oh, how do I end mine? Rock. Okay, I say something like, <laughs> oh, it's rock, yeah. yeah. I, I thought you did the single finger salute there. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> yeah, I thought, hang on, I can't remember doing that no, myself. No, no. Hey, and but... I don't edit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or you, you could maybe pixelate the hand. Uh, that that no. could work. Uh, but yeah, but no, uh, yeah, I, I usually uh, just say... Um, Oh, let me know what you, you let me know what you think in the comments section. Uh, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, thank you for joining me, and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Rock, rock. Yeah, <laughs> I did two that's, fingers that that's time. The one. Anyway, there you go. so anyway, <laughs> so we'll say cheerio. Bye for yeah. now. Okay, bye bye, and thank you for the chat. It's uh, oh, been very you. enjoyable. Thank you for coming along and doing it. Cheers, no problem everyone. at all. Okay, see you later. Cheers. Well, there you go, folks. It was a Great interview with um, with Phil of Wings of Pegasus. And the thing about it is the, the guy is phenomenal. What he's doing is absolutely brilliant. So uh, go up and check his channel out. Get over there, watch his live streams and things like that. Go and support him. And um, obviously, you know, obviously strike the like, as he says. I just say hit the like if you go over there. Sub to his uh, his channel and that. All the information will be down below. All the necessary links will be there. So get over there and follow him. The guy is phenomenal. Absolutely great guy. And um, when I met him at the, the warning, I've seen his channel before, then I met him. And he's just the same behind the camera or in real life. It, that's him. He's a, so, so genuine. And I love to meet people like that. And he is such a, such a great person. Anyway, enough of me rabbiting on here there you go information's all down below and i'd like to thank everybody as usual you're all awesome for your comments your support and everything else so thank you thank you thank you and of course please stay safe and this old fella will be back bye for now